My first collection, um, Eatery Both Starve, published by Carcanet Press in March during the height of the pandemic, um, is my debut collection. And it explores a number of different themes, particularly one that I'm very fascinated in in my private and personal life as well as, as a poet. And that encompasses the act of consumption and everything that means. Um, I'm particularly interested in the wild oscillation that many of us seem to engage in between feast and famine, uh, between plenty and few, um, between excess and denial. And so much of our year is taken up with that, you know, even as we come into Christmas time now, the, the Feast of Plenty, and then afterwards, obviously in January, um, all of the dieting and all of that um, self-denial and self-flagellation. So I find that extreme in human experience, as reflected in our weather and natural world too, um, fascinating. And that's something that very much spoke to me as I was writing these poems. Many of them explore my own relationship with food, um, and indeed, I suppose, a lot of women's relationship with food and particularly around my decision to become a vegetarian around the age of six or seven, um, principally because I found the idea of thriving on the flesh of another living being a very, very difficult um, thing to swallow, excuse the pun. And so that is something that I've been trying to discover about myself, trying to figure out why I made this decision, what influenced me at such a young age to do something quite radical, I suppose, although it's much more prevalent now um, that younger and younger people are choosing not to eat meat. But it's not just about that. I think it very much relates to the idea of growing up as an Irish Catholic, uh, particularly as an Irish Catholic woman um, and young girl and what it means to come of age in a society where on one um, what it means to come of age in a society where on one hand Catholicism tells us to be penitential and to be good and to deny ourselves and certainly the sequence on the saints and martyrs in this book very much reflects that celebratory attitude that the church would have around younger women, certainly back then, um, starving themselves, hurting themselves as we would now see it. You know, we would very much, I think, interpret it as self-harm. And that's something I was very fascinated and interested by as well. Um, and then on the other hand, culture um, telling us, you know, to be attractive and to be able to take on any um, kind of mantle that it wants us to take on as young women, whether that be, you know, being more attractive, being more outgoing, being social, being available. Um, and how do we marry these two extreme um, versions of femininity and why should we indeed? And so I think the book is a melting pot or a cauldron maybe even better of all of these different concerns around food, around feast and famine, around self-denial, around celebration. Um, and then I suppose the backdrop of the sea is there. And that's something I brought through from my pamphlet, White Whale, which was published by Southward Editions in 2015, um, which very much dealt with the death of my father, Robert, um, in 2010. So that has kind of leaked into this new collection too. Um, there's certainly a smell of salt through all the poems, I think, and a recognition too of that loss um, that never goes away. And if anything, it becomes more part of you and embedded into your very identity. And so there are lots of poems in the collection that deal with um, letting him go in a very different way um, to the physical letting him, um, him go when he died initially, but rather almost trying to maybe bring him closer, um, but at the same time, an awareness that he is no longer with us. So that awful uncanny feeling of seeing somebody that has passed away on the street and you think for a second, oh my gosh, that's him. So that sense of disappointment, but also of hope that maybe on some different plane and um, the people that we miss and that we um, are denied still exist. So there's a lot um, to explore in this book, I hope. And it was certainly uh, a joy and a challenge to write and I, I'm so happy that it came out even in this bizarre time and maybe especially in this bizarre time. Um, so I hope it, it continues to um, speak to people and speak to readers.